Hey guys, Viper Mike here. Just gonna start working on the silver car now that the uh, the black car is all done. Just gonna start moving it over onto the lift um, and put the motor back in this one and get it uh, ready to go back on the road. So I think what I'll do is get it on the lift, pull the transmission out, um, and then put the motor in. It should hopefully go in pretty... Uh, it should be pretty painless, I think, going in. There's really not much to it. Now that I've done it a couple of times, I kind of know all the steps. So it should go in no problem. So let's go ahead and get the forklift out and uh, get it moved onto the lift here. So that wasn't too bad got it back on the lift again so we'll just work on getting this transmission out um, I'll probably pull the bell housing off first um, so that it can drop straight down because otherwise I've went through this before I mean I could just move it forward to kind of give it some clearance here but um, I might actually just do that so that way the bell housing will be much easier to take off with the transmission off the car um, but, uh, yeah, it's got to come forward because otherwise it hits right here where the, uh, the notch for the starter is. So, uh, we'll get the clutch disconnected, um, and we'll get the stand under it and, uh, get this drive shaft out. Hopefully not spill oil everywhere, but chances of that happening are pretty good. Considering the last one gave me a pretty good oil shower when I was doing it So let's move on and get this uh, transmission jack in here So here I'm working on taking the uh, the transmission cross member out. You have to loosen these bottom three bolts first because the uh, the two halves of the cross member they kind of slide. So if you don't loosen these, then they they'll stay kind of pressed up into the frame and it'll be harder to remove. But once you do loosen them, it gives you the ability to once you loosen these outside bolts, it'll give you the ability to kind of compress the. Uh, the cross member a little bit and then the transmission should just st drop straight down so I've disconnected I got the drive shaft out disconnected this uh, wiring harness here and then there's another harness so this is part of the uh, transmission harness this little plug here so you have to unhook it otherwise if you don't it hits on the frame right there as you're trying to drop the transmission down so now the last thing left is we've got the uh, the line for the clutch for the slave cylinder so to get that off, you just take that plastic collar with a pair of, uh, with either a wrench that fits around it or a pair of needle nose, and you push it in, 
and that will release it. So once you've got that released, then the transmission should be able to come straight down. So just like that, the transmission is out. There it is on the ground there. It's actually pretty clean. I'll probably give it a, a quick wash. I'm just gonna pull the bell housing off, clean it up a bit and get it ready to go back in. And then I'll refill it with oil. Um, I ended up draining the oil before I pulled the drive shaft because I didn't feel like taking a oil bath this morning. So this is where we are. Um, the shifter boots uh, seen better days, but I might be able to get a new one in there. I don't know if they still make them or if you can get them, but I'll take a look, see what I can find. Um, I'll also give this here a quick cleanup while everything's out, just to kind of get all this dirt and stuff cleaned up a bit. But yeah, now we're uh, almost ready to put the engine in. Um, we, we actually could pretty much go in right now because I can do this cleaning after because um, I can put the engine in and then lift the car back up again so that's where we're at so I was having a look at the spark plug wires on this motor because I just I pulled them out um, I don't remember why but anyway good thing I did because I noticed a few of the boots are split and um, they've, I think they've probably been arcing on the, on the little heat shields. I noticed um, this one too. If you have a look there, you see where it's split and it's the little burn mark there. So that looks like it was arcing on the, uh, on that little metal heat shield that's around the spark plug. So luckily, I do have a whole another set from the other motor because I upgraded the wires on the other motor and these wires are all in good shape. So. I'll go through and uh, replace the ones that are burnt. Hopefully I don't have to pull the intake manifold to, uh, to get that other wire out. I think it's just the two that are split. So I'll go ahead and replace them and, uh, and get ready to put this motor in. To replace the uh, spark plug wires I got number six and number five replaced one interesting thing I noticed is the uh, old number five or the one that was in there had a 90 degree boot on it and, and the one that was on on this motor had a straight boot like this one um, like the number nine here so I don't know if it was uh, if these wires are newer or older or what but anyway I was able to get the uh, the replacement wire in there. Um, I just used um, used my little pry tool to be able to push it on the coil. Um, otherwise, I mean, really didn't want to have to pull the intake manifold to replace one wire, which would be kind of ridiculous when you think about it. But anyway, I got the wires on, so time to get this motor uh, um, lifted with the engine hoist and uh, get ready to put it in. This one's uh, up in the air now, ready to go in. I'm glad I got these lifting brackets. Um, makes my life lifting it so much easier. I don't have to worry about scratching the valve covers or anything. 
I'm gonna give it a little bit of a cleanup down at the bottom. It's a little oily down there, which is kind of strange considering this engine only really has like 8,000 kilometers on it. And then I also need to pull these uh, pull these oil lines off. Um, I've got my set of aftermarket RSI ones that I had on the uh, old motor that I obviously didn't use because I went with a completely different toiling system. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and uh, put the fittings on for the aftermarket lines. Obviously it's a lot easier to do with the engine out of the car. And once I put those on, then we can, um, then we're pretty much ready to put it in the car. straightforward now. too bad I'm just trying to just, just trying to sort out all the bolts I've got here I've got lots of extras because I've got three engines that I took apart and I'm only putting two of them back in so I've got doubles of a bunch of hardware um, I learned my lesson on the other car and I removed the uh, the little air box that sits there um, it gives you a lot more room to get it in otherwise the the valve the back of the valve cover hits it and it makes it a bit of a pain to get it in but now the engine's in um i can start putting the accessories back on um i was able to get the uh, lower coolant hose on as i was putting it in so that kind of makes my life a little easier 
Um, I'm gonna run the new oil lines and I'm gonna replace this oil cooler with the other one that I have. This oil cooler was in here with the old engine that failed so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it just in case there's any junk in there or anything from that engine. Um, I don't want to take the chance so it's, a, it's only two bolts, three bolts there to replace it and then just swap the fittings over to the other one. Um, and yeah, I'll just keep moving along here. Um, next step is pretty much get this transmission ready, get the bell housing off, bolt the bell housing back onto the engine, and uh, then get the transmission in. And then I can start on plumbing everything back up again. Um, I don't see why this engine shouldn't be running today. Um, probably a few hours to get it running. Shouldn't be too bad unless I hit a snag, but hopefully not. So we'll just keep plugging away here.
here I've got, um, I'm working on the slave cylinder here. Uh, I've used this uh, bleeder relocation kit on my other transmission, so I'm going to put it on this one too, kind of makes your life easier uh, when bleeding these. Um, the whole thing, all it does is, because this is a bleeder right here, so when you're trying to bleed your slave, you need two people because somebody has to be under the car bleeding it. Um, and somebody has to be pushing the clutch. If you're using this relocation kit, you run it up into the engine bay and then you just hook up your vacuum um, uh, bleeder to it and then you can just do it yourself. So it makes your life a lot easier. So all it is, is you take this bleeder out, you put this little fitting in and then you run this line up uh, to the engine bay and then you use this other fitting with a bleeder on the end and then you kind of mount it. Um, I mounted it by the fuse box on the black car, so I'll probably do the same thing here. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, get this bleeder out and put this fitting in, um, and then we can get the get the transmission back in the car. So to do this, we go ahead and uh, we take our factory bleeder out. It's just a 7 16 So we can take that out completely. So you see this end is kind of similar to that one. So now we can go ahead and put that in. They give you a bunch of these crush washers. Um, I don't know if they're really necessary, but I put it on there anyway. And then we can go ahead and uh, get our line out of the bag. And obviously you can only really do this while the transmission's out of the car. It's not really possible to do with the transmission inside. So it's one of, one of those things, while you have it out of the car, you just go ahead and put this on. So we get this fitting snugged up here. and tight okay and now on the other end we take one I don't know why they give you two in this kit um, I don't really see the purpose of the second one but anyway so now we've got this end and then to this one we mount the actual bleeder just like so and that's it. So you just tighten all this up and then once you're uh, ready to bleed you just use the actual bleeder end and then you bleed it. So this is probably a 7 16 or a 10 mil or something. So we can use that, tighten it up. Yeah that's a 10 mil. Just like so. So now we've got this bleeder and we can put it uh, in the engine bay once we got the transmission in. So next I'll bolt the uh, bolt housing up, uh, bell housing up to the uh, to the engine. I'm going to clean up these um, dowels so that they slide in nice because they didn't come out all that easy. And, and then we can get the transmission back in.
All right, so the motor is in, transmission's in. Struggled with the transmission a little bit. My transmission jack is a piece of crap. It um, loses pressure. My transmission jack is a piece of crap. It loses pressure. So it's, it's hard to keep the transmission in one place as you're trying to kind of slide it in and make the, get the splines all lined up. But anyway, the transmission's in now. Um, I was a bit ambitious expecting to start this thing today. Um, I forgot that I don't have a battery for it and I also don't have any coolant. So tomorrow I'm going to pick up a battery, going to pick up coolant. I might as well do an oil change on it. Um, and then I've got to um, fill the transmission with oil also because I drained it all out today. So I will do all that tomorrow and um, it should be good to fire up. Everything else is hooked up. Um, as far as I can tell anyway, I've got the air intake on, kind of looks like it's in the right spot here. Um, everything else is back on, got the fuel line connected, all the vacuum lines are on. So you just need to put the, uh, the windshield wipers and the cowl back on and that'll be done. Um, yeah, so moving along and then I can put the front end together. I just need to put the impact bar back on and the bumper. Um, and that'll be that'll be that so Tomorrow she'll be she'll be running hopefully So I'm getting ready to uh, Get this engine running. I picked up coolant and oil and stuff this morning um, I also I ordered this uh, coolant filling system kit off Amazon just a cheap Chinese one um, I've never used one before, but this thing was cheap. It was like 30 bucks or something. So I figured it's worth a shot. So I mounted it here on the expansion tank. I uh, used the right bushing and then tightened it down so that it was tight in there. And then I used their little attachment. Um, and see it's holding vacuum now. It's said to bring it to between 20 and 25. Uh, I think it's inch something rather, but anyway it's been sitting at just below 25 for the last few minutes um, and you can see this uh, coolant hose here is collapsed so now um, what I can do is hook up the uh, the hose and put it in the, in a jug of coolant and it should hopefully just suck it in so we've got a jug of coolant here. Put that there. This is the little attachment that you use um, to get the air out of it. So put that on there. Put this in the jug. And then we open that up. And it just starts sucking it in. Just got to make sure we keep an eye on the level in the jug so that we don't suck any air in. I've never tried this before. I usually just fill it and open the bleeder but hey it's worth a shot I guess why not oh second some air I think I'll switch to a new jug now and we did suck a little bit of air in when we first started some people will actually pre-fill the hose first Hopefully that won't be an issue. And it looks like there's a check valve or something on the on the end, because when I pulled it out, it didn't. None of the coolant came out the other end. The 
overflow is getting full now. So we'll see what happens at this point. Because the, the radiator hose is still, still collapsed. Uh oh. That's not good. Sucked a bunch of air in. Watch the gauge there. It's still reading vacuum, so I'm assuming when there's no vacuum left, that's when it's full. I guess we'll find out. these jugs into one now. Sorry, I didn't realize the camera was pointing at the wrong place. Gauge is reading zero now. It's still pulling some coolant in. And this is my last jug. Add a bit of water, don't hurt anything. I'm just waiting for that upper rad hose to expand. It's still collapsed.
can't really tell if it's still doing anything or not. Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Well, I guess we'll call that. All right. So, uh, oil's full. Coolant is hopefully full. Um, let's try to fire it up.
Okay. Now I'm gonna go grab some lunch and then uh, finish putting this thing back together.
So I've made good progress on this car here. Pretty much the only thing left is to put the hood on. I've got the, uh, the sides on, put the wheel well liners in. Um, had to kind of go back a couple steps to put um, a polyurethane motor mount because I forgot to do that. Would have been a lot easier to, uh, to do it while the motor was out of the car, but um, took me an extra hour to do that right now. So now um, I can go ahead and uh, put the hood on. Um, put my hood pins in uh, into the hood because I took them out when I got painted. Um, and that's pretty much it. And uh, can put the windshield wipers back on. Just got to find them. And then we can get this car out of here.
the easiest thing to do by yourself, but it's doable. Now I'm just going to adjust it. See how our gaps are looking. This hood never really fit all that great, but for an aftermarket hood, it's not bad. Kind of where they should be, so we'll go ahead and tighten them up.
transmissions ready for the black car, so I'll be swapping that this weekend. So, time to uh, put the black car inside, get it ready to pull the uh, transmission off. Um, the silver one really needs a wash. The thing's been sitting for about two years. So, good thing it's silver, you can't see all the dirt on it. But here we are. So the silver car is all done and uh, ready to be enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe, and more content coming.